Hey everyone, we have some news from AMD's side of things to talk about today. Uh, this is a fairly quick one. So AMD's got some new CPUs in the desktop space. This includes the R750 3 d finally coming out. That's the Vcash version of the 5800X that AMD has been talking about for something like a year now. Uh, additionally, or approaching it anyway. Additionally, we'll be talking about the lower end Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. There's a couple in the 4000 naming as well. But overall, it's the same architectures that you know as N3 and 2, depending on which ones you're talking about, except in general, cheaper than the existing version. So there's a 5700X, comes down in price from the 5800X previously. There's a 5600X, which is cheaper than the 5600X. And this is very clearly AMD's response to Intel's thus far very successful Alder Lake 12th gen CPUs. So let's talk about the specs today. Before that, this video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is a Linux server hosting provider that GN has used for nearly a decade now for its own servers. Alongside dedicated website hosting, Linode makes it easy to cut out third-party VPN services to build your own VPN that you fully control, easily configured via the interface. Linode also has hundreds of guides for custom servers, including game server apps like Rust, Minecraft, CSGO, and guides to host your own video calling servers to eliminate third parties. Linode is a great way to take back control of software and your hosting, and Gamers Nexus viewers get a $100 credit for 60 days on new accounts at linode.com slash gamersnexus or click the link below. All right, so we're going to start out straight away with the specifications, the pricing, and the release dates, just to get the key information out there immediately. And these new CPUs include some that have already kind of sort of launched in some capacity, like the R5 4600G. We'll come back to that in a moment. But more importantly, it's also launching some CPUs for uh, the DIY space that we haven't seen before other than in rumors. So the R7 5700X, the 5600 non-X and the 5500 R5 CPU uh, are the main ones of the lower end cheaper camp today with the 5800X3D being the high end CPU coming out. And then there's a couple of 4000 series of options as well that would compete more with something like a Pentium 7400 class CPU from Alder Lake or maybe an i3-12100F or something like that. So for the 5700X, this is a $300 MSRP CPU. It comes in under the R75800X that's currently available for $360. The 5700X runs eight cores, 16 threads, and a boost clock up to 4.6 gigahertz with a 65 watt TDP. As a reminder, this isn't exactly one-to-one -one with power. The 5800X is a 105 watt TDP CPU. That one came out a while ago, so this is not new. It's just for comparison. It's not a surprise then that the 5800X boosts slightly higher at 4.7 gigahertz instead of 4.6. And it also runs significantly higher at 3.8 gigahertz base clock instead of 3.4. So that's the reason for the TDP reduction. And just again, TDP in AMD's formula does not include power but it is the easiest way to quickly compare things. For coolers, neither of these includes a stock cooler. The 5700X does not include a cooler, but all the other ones on this list today do. Well, except for the 5800X 3D probably doesn't include a cooler either, although AMD didn't explicitly line that out in the specs table. Anyway, the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X is a six core 12 thread CPU that runs 3.5 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz for boost, and that's supposed to be $200 MSRP. And just before anyone talks about MSRP, as a reminder, if you haven't looked lately, the CPU market is actually doing pretty well. Stock overall has been good to okay, depending on which CPU you're looking at, and pricing has been pretty close to what it's supposed to be, if not exactly. So that's actually been great to see. It's a big difference from the GPU market. If you haven't looked at the CPU market in a while, you should, because uh, we would expect these prices would be more aligned with reality than a GPU price, for example. So back to the chart, the R5-5600X is about $230 on Amazon right now today, and it has the same six core 12 thread setup. It runs at 3.7 gigahertz to 4.6, and that puts it at an extra 200 megahertz for $30. Both of them even come with the same cooler, which is the Wraith Stealth cooler. So the 5600 versus the 5600X, uh, at $30 different, it's not as big of a gap as if you just looked at the MSRP for the X when it first launched. For another new CPU, there's the Ryzen 5 5500. This is a six core 12 thread part, just like the 5600. And this one is running at 3.6 to 4.2 gigahertz, but it's accompanied by a heavy reduction in cache from 35 megabytes in the previous listing to 19 megabytes in total. The PCIe generation also changes here. So that's a massive uh, massive reduction in the I.O. capabilities. 
chopped down to Gen 3 from Gen 4. Alongside this, however, the price comes down by $40 to $160. And frankly, uh, PCIe Gen 4 is not going to do a lot for you, especially in the GPU category of things on a CPU of this power level. You're going to be more limited by something else first. So that's an okay thing to cut as long as it's actually contributing to the reduction in price, which probably it is. As for the others, they're all on Zen 2, so they're older architecture. The Ryzen 4000 series CPUs already existed in OEM-only options and uh, pro options, for example, previously. They're just more official now for the DIY market, with the price ranging from $100 to $150 for socketable CPUs. The $100 R34100 is a four-core, eight-thread part with another big cash reduction. This would be the most direct competitor for the current list of Pentium 7400 series CPUs, or maybe in the range of an i3-12100F, although the R54500 might be a closer matchup for that one. So the 4500 we're actually pretty interested in testing. The 4100 will probably run through the bench as well. We're curious to see how they perform versus Intel's cheaper Alder Lake 12 series stuff, because that's carved out a pretty good section of the market for Intel at the lower end this time, with the i3-12100 and the i5-12400, where previously Intel was severely lacking, uh, but now AMD has been lacking because it's only had the 5600X, which has been mostly close to $300 up until Alder Lake. So this is potentially a shuffling of that, a reshuffling of that to put Intel uh, on its back foot once again. Now, the launch date for all those is going to be April 4th. So that's coming up pretty soon here. We'll be trying to review those. Additionally, AMD launched more news on its R7 5800 X3D, that is the real name. If you don't recall, the 5800X3D was the, well, it was part of the technology showcase that was for Vcash at the end of one of AMD's, I believe it was Computex presentations last year, where uh, AMD CEO Lisa Su got on stage and threw it out there at the last second, talking about how they got a 15% increase in gaming performance, allegedly, by basically strapping on a bunch more cash to the top of the existing dies under the IHS. And this was without changing the Z height of the CPU. So the Z height remains the same. They've shaved things down a little bit, attached a, a big L3 cache with a direct copper bond between the two, and that's how you get the 5800X3D. So all that stuff's already known. If you're curious about some of the technology, we talk about it in that original presentation coverage. But today, the news is really just finalization of the price and the availability. So for the 5800X3D, this moves to 96 megabytes of L3 cache, or totaling closer to 100 if you had L1 and L2, which is what AMD does sometimes. That's from 32 megabytes of L3 on the 5800X previously. This CPU will sell for $450 USD, and that's for the MSRP at least, and it remains an 8-core, 16-thread part. For perspective, just sticking to AMD because it's easier to compare right now, the 5900X today, 12 cores, 24 threads, is also $450. Obviously, that doesn't have the huge amount of cash. There's definitely going to be places where, for example, we've seen this with code compile, where sometimes you look at the benchmarks, and depending on the way you're compiling the code, more cash just means more better on the chart. So it depends what you're looking at. But if you know your workloads, you'll be able to identify whether the additional cash on the 5800X3D is more valuable than the additional cores and lower cache on the 5900X. If you don't know your workloads, we'll help with that once we benchmark them uh, head to head. So we'll be able to help you figure out when it makes sense to maybe buy one or the other, or of course, just go Intel with the 12 series instead, depending on what you're doing. So that's, that's gonna be our goal. Now, uh, as for the rest, the 5800X3D will be available on April 20th. Uh, so that'll come out after these other CPUs at the lower end. AMD has not announced any additional 3D cache chips at this time. There's no 5900X3D, 5950X3D, or anything else in the stack as far as they've publicly shared. And really, we don't expect any more just because Zen 4 is right around the corner. So AMD's going to be moving over to whatever they call it, X670 maybe, uh, and an LGA socket with that crazy-looking IHS and Zen 4. So probably this will be the last round of CPUs for the existing Zen 3 lineup. A couple of additional smaller news items here. So first of all, AMD specifically used the phrase world's fastest gaming CPU for the 5800X3D. Those of you who know our content know that we don't really take any of those statements at face value. We'll be testing it. But the fact that AMD is saying it suggests that probably in at least some benchmarks, if not many of them, depending, it is contesting the 12900K. We'll test that once we get it in. But that's, uh, that's a pretty big claim if it turns out being true. Uh, additionally, the AGISA version is now available in a version 1207. AGISA 
is the binary that's provided to the uh, motherboard manufacturers to include in their BIOS, the UEFI. So this is where uh, support for different CPUs and, and motherboards starts to blend together. The 1207 version number of AGISA is the one where Zen 3 architecture will be enabled on at least 300 series motherboards that support it. So this is something AMD is making 1207 available. It's up to the motherboard manufacturers to incorporate that into their UEFI and push out that update publicly. So if you have a 300 series board, Zen 3 architecture will now officially be supported on it as long as your motherboard manufacturer uh, includes that AGISA update into its, its own code. In clarifying statements as well, AMD noted that even the 5800X3D is included in this. How that'll scale on 300 series boards, 300 series, if you recall, or if you're on one, you probably know, were generally more difficult to work with for memory. So uh, you're more likely to be restrained somewhere in the memory frequency and tuning of memory and overall uh, the memory topology can be challenging to work with depending on the board and the memory you're running. So probably it's still not the, the greatest idea to go out and explicitly seek a 300 series board, like if you're buying one to put a new CPU in, but if you have one, it might be worthwhile trying to upgrade it. Although this is a scenario where there's enough moving pieces with hardware potentially from 2016, 2017 and today that uh, it, it's probably worth waiting to see if anyone tests with your specific board, either in a review outlet or just a forum to potentially save yourself hassle if it ends up not being a great compatibility choice. Either way, number 1207 is what you want to look for in your BIOS lists when you're looking for your motherboard's new BIOS versions to see if it'll support Zen 3. So that's it for the AMD news this time. Very simple stuff. This is a, an extremely uh, trivial announcement and that was basically a spec sheet. That's kind of it and some prices, some availability. So we'll be checking back with reviews on those as always and subscribe for more. We have a lot coming up. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and we'll see you all next time.